Hello, this is the Birth Words Podcast episode number 10. You're listening to the Birth Words Podcast. Utah-based birth doula and applied linguistics scholar Sarah Pixton digs into the language of pregnancy and birth to help expectant women claim their power as life-giving agents engaged in appraiseworthy work. This podcast aims to promote positive birth paradigms and is not intended as medical advice. Welcome to the Birth Words Podcast. I'm excited to introduce you today to my friend, Crystal. And Crystal is going to tell us about two birth stories of her two sons and the role that language played during those births and leading up to them. So I have a few questions for you, Crystal. My first question is... Sorry, I didn't even let you say hi or introduce yourself or anything. No, that's okay. (laughs) Um, my first question for you is, what words did you use to identify yourself as an expectant mother and then as a laboring mother? And where did those words come from? So, yeah, I was so excited. I have always wanted to be a mom when I grew up. Um, And so I was very excited and happy throughout pregnancy. I had really great pregnancies. But I was also, yeah, scared and anxious, especially thinking about labor um, my husband teases me because I've always been terrified of being eaten by a shark and the chance of that happening is so slim, you know, but um, I actually looked up on wildlifemuseum.org and they say the odds of getting attacked and killed by a shark are one in three million, um, almost four million. So it's very, very slim chance, but um, I'm a planner. And so I asked everyone I knew about their birth stories and I I heard a lot of different things um, and a lot of things that, you know, could happen or might happen. But that's something that I am working on in my personal life right now that, you know, we shouldn't spend all our time worrying about things that might happen. You know, I might get eaten by a shark or I might need an emergency C-section, but we should just, you know, prepare the best that we can and be in the moment and be present and focus on what we can control. So um, that that's just kind of uh, what I've been working on recently in my life that, you know, there are a lot of things that, you know, that could happen, but if you're, if you just focus on those things that you can control, um, then you're going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. Did you feel like any of, like you talked about being both excited and scared or anxious. Do you feel like that was true for both of your births or do you think that um, it changed between yeah. the two or? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. So yeah, for sure. With the first one, I was very scared and anxious. Yeah. With, you know, you just don't know exactly what it's going to feel like, you know, I didn't know what contractions felt like or anything. So, um, the second birth in labor, that would definitely was a lot better for me. I didn't feel as anxious, um, cause I knew what to expect, you know? <laughs> so you said you asked a lot of people about their experiences because you wanted to know what could happen. Did you do that for your second birth as well? Or- um, that was pretty much just the first, yeah, just the first birth. Cause um, yeah, the second time around, I had already read, you know, what to expect when you're expecting cover to cover with the first, you know, pregnancy. So, um, yeah, the second time around, I, yeah, I didn't really talk that much more about people, you know, with their experience with it. But <laughs> that's interesting because you had your own experience too to inform you, which doesn't necessarily mean that it would be spoiler alert, they weren't the same, right? But, uh, that your two births. Yeah. But it kind of helped maybe calm some of those anxieties about it, it sounds like. Is that true? Yeah. To, fair to say that? Uh, yeah, I would definitely say that. <laughs> okay, so my next question is, going into your birth experience, can you remember any words that you used or that other people used to help frame the experience for you? 
Um, so I definitely, I read a book on hypnobirthing. I can't remember which one. Um, I borrowed it from a friend, but I definitely remember just trying to stay calm and relaxed. And I focused on deep breathing. Um, I think the book talked about visualizing ocean waves crashing on the shore and then fading away. And um, my first labor was so quick, I didn't really have a lot of time to frame that experience. <laughs> um, it was about three and a half hours from waking up with contractions to holding our son. Um, I was only in the hospital bed for about like 30 minutes. So <laughs> um, the rest of the time was at home and in the car. But my second labor was a lot longer. Um, and it was about... It was like nine hours of contractions that I felt. So, yeah, not really specific words, but definitely those feelings of trying to stay calm and, and mm -hmm. relax. Did you use any of those, like you talked about the wave visualization, did you use any of that during labor or is that just something you remember reading about while you were pregnant? Yeah, I just remember reading it. Um, and both times with both labors, I... I mostly just focused on deep breathing. I didn't really picture anything in my mind. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So even with the first, the first birth, um, I had some soft music in the background, but I didn't even really hear it. Like I was just so honed in and focused that, yeah, all I could focus on was, was the breathing really. <laughs> cool. That's an important thing to focus on. Yeah. <laughs> My next question is, when you were preparing, both for your pregnancy and then as, while you were pregnant, when you were preparing for birth, did you find that there were any ways of thinking or words or ideas that you had to discard that like you'd been exposed to during your whatever times during your life that you needed to rework? Or did you have only helpful frameworks? Or what was your experience with the ideas and frameworks that you came into pregnancy with and whether they worked for you going forward or whether you had to kind of reevaluate? Yeah. So I don't feel like I really had to reframe anything or rethink things. Um, I'd say about the, it's about 50, 50, the people in my life. Like I feel like half the women I know, you know, planned on the epidural and that's what they wanted and it was great for them. And then um, there's the other half who, who chose natural or unmedicated. And um, I knew going into both my births that I wanted a natural birth. And um, I definitely believe medicine has its place. I was still open to an epidural, you know, or anything, but I'm mm -hmm. grateful both my labors went well and were unmedicated. So um, yeah, not, I didn't, I didn't feel like I had to reframe much. I, I, I felt very supported and, and everything. That's great. Cause it can be a lot of hard work to try to have a different perspective than when you've been accustomed to. So that's really nice that you felt like you had a positive one going into it that you didn't have to rework. Yeah. I would say the same thing for me too. I think, um, if we set aside my twin birth experience because of several factors that made it unique that I, also came into birth feeling like it was something that I could do, that I'd heard positive things from women who had both had medicated and unmedicated labors. And yeah, that's great. Hopefully more and more women can feel like they come into it feeling positive. Yeah. Cool. So during your pregnancy or during your birth, were there any words of, from other people that stuck in your mind or that were important? Um, so it's so funny. After I listened to the first episode of Birth Words, I immediately thought about how um, just the absence of negative words was positive for me. Um, so I'm not sure if that makes sense exactly. No, but, for sure. Yeah, because my husband, he had a hard time watching me go through, you know, the unmedicated labor. Um, well, really labor in general, but <laughs> um <laughs> He felt so helpless seeing me in so much pain and not being able to do anything about it. Um, but that's what I wanted. I wanted the natural birth. So um, he was supportive of that. He, you know, he never said, you can't do this or just get the epidural. Like he was so supportive mm -hmm. to the whole thing. And um, yeah, not not really specific words, but just feeling that support and love in whatever way I wanted to, to try doing that. I think that's an important point for partners that feel like 
They're going through this intense painful, uncomfortable, however you frame it, experience. And lots of times partners feel helpless, like there's nothing I can do. But I like how you're saying something that you can do is be positive and affirming with your words. And I think that what I've found as I've talked to people about what they remember that was said during pregnancy and birth, especially with positive things, people don't often remember exactly what was said, but they remember like the feeling that they got from them, which I think ties into like, this is the underlying belief that they're communicating is that they are here to support me, that they love me, that they believe that I can do this, whatever the positive belief is. Sometimes it doesn't matter how it's said, as long as you feel that positive support, right? Like, do you agree with that? Yeah, and that's a really beautiful way to put it, um, that, yeah, it doesn't really matter the exact words you're saying, that as long as it's, yeah, a positive thing and and you're trying to, yeah, just be supportive and and loving, that, yeah, that's the feeling that transfers. I like that. And that's something that a husband or mom or whoever is there with a laboring woman can do right they can when they feel like i can't do anything to help this person being that positive loving support makes a lasting difference yeah definitely cool do you have any other thoughts about birth or words before i close with my last question for you um it's interesting that you know like i was saying earlier it's you know kind of 50 50 where where some of us choose to you know, just go for, you know, all the medicine and everything or, or, you know, some of us feel really passionate about unmedicated. And um, I think it's really important to remember that it's so specific to each individual, like, we're all a little different. And we, yeah, we're going to need different things. But I like your, your message and your, your mission of that, you know, as long as we can support each other with positive words that, that that is a huge, huge help to any, any birth or labor. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's really important. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. Here's my last question. It's two because you have had two birth experiences, but if you had to describe your birth experience in just one word, what word would it be? This is such a hard question for me. Um, (laughs) But yeah, so the first birth, I would say amazing. Um, it was pretty ideal. I slept through most of the contractions. And, and so that was really nice. But um, becoming a mom and a parent is such an experience. It's an amazing experience. And, you know, I've heard stories of, of people who as soon as they saw their baby or held their baby for the first time, it was this overwhelming feeling of love. And for me, I was still kind of in shock um, that it, it happened so fast. So in that moment, you know, it was still a little crazy, but those first weeks and months with your sweet little baby are so precious and amazing. So mm-hmm. I chose amazing for birth number one. And then my second birth, I would say long because <laughs> yeah, it was like nine hours of contractions, but my water had broken. Um, it was broken for like 15 hours. So yeah, it was a lot longer, but they were both totally worth it. And I am so grateful for both of those experiences. Awesome. I'm grateful for you sharing your story with us today. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us. Yeah. Thank you for letting me. And I hope that it can be helpful to someone out there. Great. Bye. Bye. Did words play an important role in your birth experience? If you're interested in sharing your story on the podcast, go to summitbirthutah.com slash birthwords. If you're liking what you hear on the podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you choose to listen. For more resources about harnessing the power of words to benefit the birth experience, visit summitbirthutah.com slash birthwords. Thank you.